From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Hans Conried, Earl Ross, the sportsman Victor Miller and his orchestra, and Mel Blanc, the creator of Bugs Bunny. Yeah. What's up, Doc? Played his new character, Zookie. Hello, everybody, 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 everybody. <laughs> Hi. And starring himself in person, Mel Blanc. Good evening, folks. Well, it's Saturday afternoon in Mel Blanc's little town, and Mel and his girl Betty, like most romantic young couples, are enjoying the movie matinee at the Bijou. Now the show is over, and in some dark spot of the theater, we hear Mary Jones saying to her boyfriend, We have to go now, Frank. Take your eye away. And in the back row, we hear Susan Arnold saying to her boyfriend, All right, Henry, the lights are up. Wipe that lipstick off your face. <laughs> At another dimly lit corner of the theater, where Mel has been sitting with Betty, we hear Betty saying, Oh, Mel, the picture's over. Wake up! <laughs> so now we find Betty and Mel having left the theater, walking homeward, and Mel, still under the influence of what he has just seen, is enacting a portion of the picture. I want you, Ingrid. I'm going to take you in my arms and hug you and squeeze you and crush you tighter and tighter, tighter! Mel! Get away from that lamppost. <laughs> Gosh, if only I were an actor. The salaries those guys make. Clark Gable, Robert Taylor, Gary Cooper. I'll bet some of them make as high as $50, $60 a week. <laughs> Darling, they make at least $1,000 a week. $1,000 a week? Oh, Betty, if I made that much, we could live like kings. Eat the best. Every night, chow mein. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you think I can't be an actor, huh? <laughs> Look at that picture we just saw, Cloak and Dagger. Oh, wasn't Gary Cooper wonderful? Gary Cooper, Gary Cooper, Gary Cooper. I bet if his name was Sam Cooper, you wouldn't be so excited. <laughs> what does Gary Cooper do, anyway? The girl says to him, Gary, do you love me? Will you take me away with you? Will you marry me? And Gary just stands there and says, Yep. <laughs> Then the minister says, you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife. And Gary says, yep. <laughs> what a life. $25,000 a yep. <laughs> oh, Mel, now stop showing off and stop dreaming about being an actor. Well, an actor makes a lot of money. And I'll bet your father would have more respect for me if I had a lot of money. But that's where you're wrong, darling. Just be yourself. Let father respect you for your... Your... You see, I gotta have money. <laughs> No, Mel. No, you're all wrong. I know Father's beginning to like you, especially since you voted him into your lodge. In fact, he may even announce our engagement tonight. Oh, oh Betty, what a feeling. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful, Mel? Yeah. Like the time we had a strawberry soda and drank it with two straws. <laughs> yeah. And then we got reckless and threw one straw away. <laughs> well, here we are, Betty. Yeah, here we are. Gosh, it was a nice afternoon. Yeah, sure was. Well, thanks for walking me home, Betty. Come on, Mel. Come on. Gosh, I think I missed my chance. When she puckered up her lips, I bet I could have kissed her. Gosh, Betty sure is nice. I can just see Betty and me married, sharing this fix-it shop. How happy we'll be, Mr. and Mrs. Mel Blank. And in a year or two, <laughs> we'll have some little blanks. <laughs> A little boy blank and a little girl blank hair. Hello, Mel. Oh, hello, Mrs. Adams. What can I do for you? Mel, I came over to ask you for a special favor. Will you mind my baby? You mean little Julius here? <laughs> well, gosh, Mrs. Adams, this is a fix-it shop. If there's something wrong with a baby, I'll gladly fix them. <laughs> oh, Mel. Oh, but, but I never took care of a baby before. Well, well, look, what if, uh, well, suppose... You mean uh, he, um... Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what these are for. Oh, fine. That's what I'll need. Bibs. <laughs> well, I'll be back in a few hours, Mel. Don't let anything happen to little Julia. I won't. Oh, look, he likes me. He's opening his mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's putting his little hands around your neck. Oh, tell him to stop squeezing. <laughs> oh, Mel, he's only a year old. That kid's a killer. <laughs> well, I've got to go now. Take good care of Julia. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Mrs. Adams. Gee, what a cute little baby. I love babies. They're almost human. <laughs> Although this one looks a little silly. Uh, uh, gee, he must have heard me. Oh, the baby's lonesome for company. Maybe he wants to talk to another baby. Hold the monkey wrench in your hand. That's what you get for being nice to babies. Well, Julius, I have to put you down back here. Here comes Mr. Cushing, my lodge president. Hello, Mel. <laughs> Greetings, mighty potentate. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. I, uh, hope you don't mind me saying so, mighty potentate, but you look a little unhappy. Well, I'm having a little domestic trouble, Mel. The maid? No, the maid's all right. I can't stand my wife. <laughs> you know, I'd leave her in a minute. I'd leave her in a minute if she didn't have all that money. <laughs> I don't know why I'm standing here telling you all this. It's just that I've got no one to talk to. <laughs> well, I think Betty and I are going to hit it off very well together, Mr. Cushing. Well, Betty's a fine girl. But I can only say what I say to every couple about to be married. Stop! <laughs> oh, but Mr. Cushing, not my Betty. Well, go ahead, Mel. But you'll learn that before marriage, everything's wonderful. You're happy. You're in clover. And after the marriage, poison ivy. <laughs> well, Mel, I've got to be on my way now. Of course, you'll be at the lodge meeting tonight, won't you? Oh, gosh, mighty potentate, I can't make it. What? <laughs> Every loyal zebra should be there, and especially you, inasmuch as it was your vote that got Mr. Colby into the lodge, and we're initiating him tonight. But, Mr. Cushing, I can't go. I promise to mind Mrs. Adams' baby. I don't care if you promise to mind Mrs. Adams. <laughs> now, you'll be there. But I still don't think I can be there. No, you better be there if you know which side your ugga is buttered on. Oh, this is terrible. I'm supposed to go to the lodge. I've got to mind Julius. Mr. Colby's going to announce my engagement. I wonder what Gary Cooper would say in a spot like this. I know. Yep. You call gay tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use call gay tooth powder. A breath of trouble, I've been told, can make a love affair grow cold. So don't let any breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, spoil your chance of romance. You'll be wise to do this. Brush your teeth night and morning before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Now, Victor Miller and the sportsman doing I Feel a Song Coming On. <laughs> Victoria, 
someone to mind the baby so he can attend the initiation of the future father-in-law, Mr. Colby, at the lodge meeting tonight. Right now, he's exhausted his list of friends. We find him working on Betty's kid brother, Tommy. But listen, Tommy, you're my friend, aren't you? Uh, look, Mel, when you mention friendship, you touch me deeply. When you mention old times, say, you touch me deeply. Now, do you really want to touch me deeply? Yeah. Mention money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fine way to talk to your future brother-in-law. <laughs> you call that a future? <laughs> It now, oh, hey, Mel, look, here comes your help with Zuki. Why don't you get him to mind the baby? Hi, Mel. Zuki, I've been looking for you all day long. Where have you been? Well, I was here today, 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 today. Never mind. Just stay here and take care of Mrs. Adams' baby. I'm going down to the lodge meeting. Uh, come on, Tommy. Uh, so long, Zuki. What happened? Oh, gosh, it's Julie Lily, 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 a rockabye baby on the tree, 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 tree. A rockabye baby on the tree, 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 tree. <laughs> I better get down off this tree. Ah, <laughs> oh, what a uh, what a nice baby. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I like babies. They, yeah, they touch a soft spot in my... <laughs> Hello, Mr. Colby. Hello, Zuki. Uh, where's Mel? Oh, he went to the lodge meeting uh, a long time ago. He did? Well, that's odd. I stopped at Doc Brown's house and he'd left, too. That's funny they left without me. I wonder why. Well, uh, if you want to ask my opinion, Mr. Colby... Yes? <laughs> I haven't got any. Oh. <laughs> well, frankly, I'm a bit hurt. I was going to tell Mel that he... Uh, well, perhaps could announce his engagement to Betty, and he didn't even wait for me. Well, excuse me, Mr. Colby, I, I gotta get back to the baby. Yes, I was going to announce the engagement. Baby? Yeah, I, I love babies. Uh, especially when they're one mummy, mummy, and one mummy, and three mummy, and mummy, and then a five mummy, and mummy, and mummy. <laughs> Seventeen years old. <laughs> Zuki, whose baby is that? Uh, well, you see, uh, Mel, uh, we, uh, Mel's baby? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. oh. Mel's been two-timing Betty. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Colby, don't get a pissed. No uh, wonder uh, he didn't wait for me to go to the meeting. Yes, he was afraid to face me. Oh, you got Mel all the I'm going down there. <laughs> I'm going down there and break every bone in his body. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Mel. When Colby gets a hold of me, he'll, he'll tear him to pieces. Oh, he'll rip him up. He'll break every bone in his body. Is there a doctor in the house? I now call this meeting to order. In the name of the benevolent order of Liar Zebra. <laughs> the members will now rise and give the password. Boo! 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 Brother Blank, we have finished saying the password. Oh, I'm not saying the password. Brother Miller has the hiccups, and I'm trying to scare it out of him. <laughs> I see. And now, Brother Ross will read the minutes of the last meeting. <clears throat> Because the lodge hall was closed for repairs, the last meeting was held in the back of Brother Murphy's Bar and Grill. <laughs> First time in three years everyone attended. <laughs> Brother Colby was voted in, and in celebration of the event, 
Brother Murphy brought in a round of beer. <laughs> we quickly dispensed with old business. <laughs> Brother Blank made a resolution to take $100 out of the treasury for the community check. Resolution was passed. Brother Murphy brought in another round of beer. <laughs> At this point, mighty potentate Cushing made a resolution to dispose of his wife. <laughs> it was passed unanimously. <laughs> and Brother Murphy brought in another round of beer. <laughs> Brother Miller fell out of the window. <laughs> a resolution was passed to petition Congress to make Murphy's Bar and Grill a national shrine. <laughs> Brother Murphy fell out of the window. <laughs> Another round of beers was passed. The neighbors complained, and the meeting was adjourned. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Ross. And now, members, as you know, Brother Colby will be initiated tonight. That's why he was invited late. We will give him the husband and wife initiation, which we used on Doc Brown. Brother Blank, we call upon you to initiate Mr. Colby. Me? Oh, oh, I can't do it. Mr. Colby is just about to announce my engagement to his daughter. And if I give him the husband and wife initiation, he, he's liable to call the whole thing off. Oh, Brother Blank, you've always bragged about being an actor. This is your chance. Well, yeah. Say, that's a good idea. And besides, he's made my life plenty miserable. This is my chance to get even with him. He's coming up the steps, and he's raving mad. Uh-oh, give me that wig and that dress. I'm really going to give it to him. Now, everybody out. Dim the lights. Dim the lights. Go out there and make it good, Mel. Okay. Mel Blank, when I get my hand on... Oh, gosh, it's dark in here. Well, what's happening? Where is everybody? There's nobody here. Nobody but little old me and big fat you. <laughs> well, there's supposed to be a meeting of the zebras here. And... Well, if you're looking for a zebra... You don't want me. I'll just run along. Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't do that. Stay a while. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Lula Bell Feigenspan Holmes. <laughs> Lula Bell, what a beautiful name. Y'all can call me Miss Feigenspan Holmes. <laughs> Golly, I just get goose bumpy all over being all alone with a big, handsome man like you. <laughs> Did you say handsome? That's what I said. I said handsome. Handsome, that is. <laughs> mm. You northern boys are so strong. Do you all mind if I feel your muscles? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, you got real Yankee muscles. Way up north. <laughs> all around your head. <laughs> mind if I call you muscle head? <laughs> girl like you can call me anything. Oh, I bet if you ever took me in your arms, you could crush me to a pulp. Lula Bell, if I ever took you all in my arms, I wouldn't waste time of crushing you. No? What would you do? I'd kiss you. Uh, oh! <laughs> well, you can kiss me if you catch me. <laughs> well, here I go. trying to show you some northern hospitality. Well, you ain't going to get any southern comfort from me. <laughs> oh, well, pardon me. i got to leave the room a moment. You wait right here. Here, Mel. Change into these clothes, quick. You're terrific. When Colby tried to kiss you, we thought we'd die. Yeah, it made me sick, too. <laughs> okay, go on in now. Here's the shotgun. Yeah. Is that you, Lula Bell? Well, come in. <laughs> Aha! You thought you'd get away, you all, huh? What? You've been a trifling with the affections of my wife, Lula Bell Fagenspan Hole. <laughs> Your wife? Oh, what a ghastly mistake. How dare you call my wife a ghastly mistake? I'm going to take this gun and blow your brains out. <laughs> please, please, Mr. Feigenspan Holden. Don't you me. I'm a good citizen. I work hard. I support a family. I pay my taxes. And when election time comes around, I go to the polls and vote. Oh, a Republican. <laughs> That's the last straw. I'm going to fill you so full of holes, you're going to look like, like cream cheese. Uh, 
Don't you mean Swiss cheese? No, I changed my mind. I'm going to beat you to a pulp. <laughs> so if you have anything further to say... What do you mean I, I can't come in? I'm coming in anyway. Where's Mel Blank? Zuki, I don't see Mel Blank anywhere. Oh, uh, that came over there, Mrs. Adams, with a, a gun in his hand. What? Your Mel Blank? Why, I'll tear you limb from limb. Now, now, don't get excited, musclehead. I mean, Mr. Coleman. <laughs> I've never been so humiliated. Out of the boo, out of the boo, out of the boo. What's going on around well, we here? we just initiated you, Brother Colby, and you're fast with flying colors. <laughs> well, anyway, Mel Blank, I've got my own score to settle with you. You, the father of this child. Why, I'll annihilate you. What? Mel, the father of this child? Julius, did you hear what that man said? There <laughs> uh, you see, Mr. Colby? Well, oh, well, Mel, my boy, uh, I'm sorry. Oh. I see. It's just been a big joke, that's all, huh? <laughs> or maybe it's funny to you, but Mel Blank, you left my child with Zuki all night, and now look what happened. What? Listen to Julia. <laughs> you told it to father. Keep smiling just right. Keep this ever in your mind. A breath of trouble isn't kind. No, indeed, that breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, can ruin your romance, jeopardize your job, make you unhappy. Don't let this social handicap mark you down. Do this. Brush your teeth night and morning before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. This is Bud Heaston reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. <laughs> Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. The Mel Blanc Show was written by Mac Benoff. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>